Day two of Baltimore Ravens mandatory mini camp has ended, but how do they do? How do the offense and defense fare? Well, apparently today for the offense, they had a bounce back day. This is a report from our guy Kyle P. Barber. He says practice ends and it was a better day for the offense. A lot of Tylen Wallace and Malik Cunningham again today. Mostly good, but Tylen Wallace had two drops. Now, with the drops, hey, get him out now. It's mini camp. Get him out now. Don't get him out during training camp because if you get out drops during training camp, then you may get off the team and off the roster. But get him out now. This is the perfect opportunity to do that. Get him out your system. But something I've been surprised about, I've been really surprised about, is all this talk about Malik Cunningham. Because with him, uh, I remember, of course, last year they brought him on and we was thinking, okay, this could be like a little project for the Baltimore Ravens. And then when we really thought about it, we were like, oh, maybe they're just getting in front of the Tyler Huntley contract getting ready to expire because he's been their primary backup quarterback for the past couple of years but he's probably going to go elsewhere and he did he went to Cleveland uh, but maybe they're just trying to get ahead of their backup quarterback situation early stay ready so you ain't got to get ready right so they signed Malik Cunningham but then Harbaugh said last year we're going to try him at quarterback we're going to try him at receiver we're going to try him at return man that scared me that scared me a lot. And I was thinking, Oof, when they want to try you at all those different positions, it ain't don't they don't sound the best. But then this year, Harbaugh said the same thing. And that still scared me. I'm like, Ugh, I don't know. And then they had him a couple of weeks ago make that official transition from quarterback to wide receiver. And I was thinking, man, with the wide receivers that we got already, we got four locks. Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, Tez Walker, Nelson Aguilar, those four are locks. And then the other two positions, it's going to be a battle, but it's Tylen Wallace and Deontay Hardy. You would think those guys are the favorites right now. Things could, of course, change. You never know, but those guys are the favorites. So anybody else competing for a wide receiver spot behind them is tough. It's going to be really tough, but especially for somebody that's been making a transition from quarterback to wide receiver full time. That, that is a big change. That's a big position change. Now I get it, like straight up. If somebody's a baller, they're a baller. Somebody that could play, they could play football like straight up, whether it's a quarterback, receiver, uh, cornerback, safety, lap, whatever. If you can play, you can play. And teams will find a position for you. But with Malik Cunningham, I just wondered, can he be like that for the Baltimore Ravens? Well, apparently they see something in him, and he's continued even before today. We keep hearing his name with him just making play after play after play. So i, I just been really surprised. By it all, surprised in a good way, of course, but I've been surprised uh, the fact that we continue to hear his name so much. But that is a positive sign for his transition to the wide receiver position. Now, could the Baltimore Ravens be looking at him like, all right, this could be our weapon X guy. This could be somebody that could do some backup quarterback if need be, can play some receiver if need be, can be an extra return man if need be. He could sort of be one of those Patrick McCarry guys on at, at the skill positions on offense. So that could that could be something neat, man. That could be something neat because Ravens could throw some stuff. They could pull out some tricks from that old playbook, and we're going to be like, oh, yeah, there go them Baltimore Ravens. So Malik Cunningham, we're going to see. But I, I've been pleasantly uh, surprised by how much recognition he's been getting. And then, of course, he was on the lounge. So they really like really becoming invested in Malik Cunningham. So – we liking what we're seeing so far, so hopefully he continues that because, again, he got a lot of competition for just a limited amount of roster spots. And somebody else who could possibly surprise us at the wide receiver position as well, and we talked about him the other day because Patrick Ricard gave him high praises, is Dayton Wade. Uh, and we covered that when the Baltimore Ravens first signed him, we covered him and talked about how he just, he really reminded me of Zay Flowers. He got the same play style as a Zay Flowers. And, and you already got one Zay Flowers. He already a problem. Imagine having two of those. Not saying he's on the level of a Zay Flowers, but not saying that he can't get there. So we'll see what could happen with him. Because if, if he makes the roster, yeah, I'll be shocked too. But anything is possible till it ain't possible no more. Back to the report from uh, Kyle P. Barber. He said Isaiah likely had his second straight highlight real one-handed catch. So Isaiah likely is ready, man. He's ready. He like, look, man, I am, all this mini camp stuff is cool, but I'm ready to show out, man. I'm ready to show these boys what I did last year while Mark Andrews was out. Now, hopefully this year, him and Mark Andrews, they can get it going at the same time, at the same place. And he also said Likely and Charlie Kolar were both heavily involved 
today so those are all great signs all right before we continue with this mini camp update make sure you subscribe to the channel leave a like on the video y'all been going crazy with it recently but keep it up keep it up i appreciate y'all now jameson hensley he had some mini camp notes for us he said cornerback marlon humphrey he was working off to the side today he said he did not participate in team drills yesterday i thought he did I thought they said Marlon Humphrey was participating. He was healthy and whatnot. So I guess he is not all the way ready yet. So again, now's the time. If he's recuperating from whatever he got going on, all right, cool. It's mini camp time. You about to have a nice long break. So you get healthy, you rest up because training camp is right around the corner. And he said Deontay Hardy remains out. Of course, uh, everything going on with his family. Hopefully that 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 situation ends up getting resolved. Uh, and because that's again, we talked about this yesterday. That's more, more way more important. Than anything to do with football Way more important So hopefully Deontay Hardy Him and his people And his baby They all straight His whole family uh, He said not practicing Due to injury Kyle Hamilton of course He had the procedure So he's got that cleaned up That's a two to three week recovery uh, Keith Mitchell didn't practice Of course he gonna be out For a long time And then Adisa Isaac Got a little hamstring injury So maybe they need to get him Some Gatorade and bananas Now earlier we talked about How Malik Cunningham He could sort of be the Pat McCarry Of the skill positions on offense But let's talk about The actual Pat McCarry Who is Baltimore Ravens Six man so to speak uh, This is also from our guy Kyle P. Barber He said We saw offensive lineman Pat McCarry Leave the field halfway through practice And did not see him return He walked to the training room On his own So that's a good thing That whatever happened to Pat McCarry I guess he got a little banged up or whatnot but he was able to go to the training room on his own power he ain't need no help because you know when, when they need help i mean enough times when they walk under their own power too it's rough enough but when they need help like oh they can't put any pressure on their leg or whatnot or on their ankle or whatnot that's when it's really really bad but the fact that pat mccarry got up and he said all right y'all i'm out i'm done for the day that's a good sign so as a precautionary depending on how bad it is as a precautionary matter, I would not be surprised if Pat McCarry is held out tomorrow just so they can play it extra, extra safe. Now, somebody who, of course, is being thrown right into the spotlight. I know Ravens were like, hey, he's going to have to earn it, but we know that it's going to him. It's Trent Simpson. Trent Simpson, of course, is going to be taking over for Patrick Queen. The Baltimore Ravens drafted him last year. And Patrick Queen knew. Remember the infamous tweet. Once they drafted uh, Trent Simpson, Patrick Queen, he tweeted, sheesh, because he knew what time it was, especially if he wasn't going to be able to get anything done as far as a contract with the Baltimore Ravens. But Trent Simpson, uh, Kyle P. Barber, again, he said he had a solid practice, got a pair of tackles for losses, and put excellent coverage on running backs at times. That's what we not like, but love to hear about. And again, this is it's just mini camp. It ain't full training camp. It ain't the full pads yet. It ain't all the way physical. But the fact that he's making plays now, that's a great way to get the offseason started for him. We talked about how this day was a nice bounce back day for the offense. Now, uh, according to, again, my guy Kyle P. Barbie said there were no interceptions from Lamar Jackson today. I told y'all yesterday, he just wanted to make the defense feel good. He just wanted to make them feel special and whatnot. He just probably throwing them interceptions that he threw yesterday on purpose because he just wanted to give them some, some motivation and whatnot, get him a nice little boost. But he said, no interceptions from Lamar Jackson today. Was a consistent pitch and catch routine at times with his pass catches. So just sounded very, very basic, very, very simple. They were just doing little walkthroughs on stuff and whatnot um, and just keeping it simple. Nothing too crazy. But at the same time, um, he said he asked QB coach T. Martin about OTAs and minicamp being a time for more risk in throws. Uh, you don't get a keys to the Ferrari and tell them to go 30 miles per hour. And he said they want quarterbacks to take risks because they can't learn and grow without testing themselves. So that's very, very true. Like we talked about with Tylen Wallace early on in this video, get the drops out the way now. It's the same way with the quarterbacks. Get them interceptions out the way now. Test yourself. Push your limits. You cannot grow as a person, as a, a player. At, you cannot grow in life, period, if you just stay in your comfort zone. If you just continue to do the same thing the same way you've been doing it. For so, and we, of course, are creatures of habit. We like routine. We like the same thing over and over and over. But if you really want to take stuff to another level, you got to get out that comfort zone, my friend. You got to get out there. So with what he said about the quarterbacks, them really taking chances now, yeah, this is how you get even better so that's what we like to hear now after mini camp was over for the day they had a press and lamar jackson he's spoken these were some of the questions from that press he seemed like he's in a really really good mood today uh will lamar jackson get together with his receivers before training camp lamar said i would love to do that but some guys don't want to leave their state 
they have to come to South Florida. <laughs> like, for like, Lamar, I get it. I get it. I'll be trying to tell. But, but anyway, uh, he said, we're just trying to get that Super Bowl. For us to do that, we got to grind. So Lamar said he's trying, but guys don't want to leave their state. Uh, but I'm sure plenty of guys will end up coming down here to do some pitch and catch with Lamar. Uh, he was also asked about his chemistry with Zay Flowers. He said, I can't really describe our chemistry. I believe it's great. It is better than last year. Just being around him down in Florida, running every route on a route tree and just trying to build. It's working out for us. And, yeah, they had some great chemistry last year. There was a little thing where they were a little off here and there. But overall, they had pretty great chemistry. So just imagine – how good of a pair they were last year and them taking it up another notch. Ooh, that's going to be special. Uh, and then Lamar Jackson on where the offense is right now. He said, we're not close to the first game or anything like that, but right now I feel like we're taking steps in the right direction. Guys are moving good, running great routes, catching the ball, blocking good. We look pretty smooth. And, yeah, it's early. It's super, super early. Just like Lamar talked about uh, last year. He said, we don't want to pick too early. And he would always talk about this during the offseason. He said, the, 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 the season, we're not there yet. We're not here yet, and we at the same point of the offseason this year now. They're not there yet, and they're they getting close, but we still got a ways to go. This is this. A lot of these guys' second year in this offense, obviously for newcomers, it's going to be their first year, like a Derrick Henry, like a Tez Walker. It's going to be his first year. Roger Rosengarden, his first year in this new offense, but for most, the majority of the guys that are uh, in the offense, this will be their second year. So they'll have a better understanding and a better grip of things. So that'll allow them to grow with the offense that much smoother. And I hate to end things on a sour note, but we got to. PFF, they did a predicting the winner of each AFC division. And for the AFC North, they predicted that the Cincinnati Bengals, they take the division this year. Now, you know, look, I respect everybody having an opinion because everybody got one. And that's cool. That's an amazing thing. But really, the Bengals, I get Joe Burrow, he's cool. They got Jamar Chase. Will they have T. Higgins? Hey, who knows right now? Hopefully not, but we'll see. But you got to look. The way I look at it is like, look, when the Bengals, they took the division, it was only because Lamar Jackson, he got hurt. So a healthy Lamar Jackson, a healthy Baltimore Ravens, I say the division should go to them. 